Hello, Carol Undy here again with part two of the carving stamp video tutorial. Today I'm going to look at the use object tab in the carving stamp. With this tab we can actually use a pre-digitized object or even a vector image as a stamp. So um, we don't have to create our own, digitize our own stamps if we don't want to. So I've got here a little blue swirl that is in the software um, and I've imported that, um, sorry, inserted that design in with my heart. Now we need to decide which part of the swirl. I like the satin stitch part of the swirl because it means we can create a raised stamp whereas just simple lines are much more subtle. But it's up to you what sort of um, stamp you use. Uh, there are two parts to this swirl so if I wanted to select part of this swirl to to make it into a stamp when I start selecting it'll only select one object so I need to group them if I want them to um, be selected as one so that's the first thing I'm going to do so I'm going to go to my color film and I'm going to select the satin stitch part of the design and luckily it's a different color so it's easy to select and all of it and then I'm going to group it and now in fact I had already done this so just make sure that that is grouped but once it's grouped then you can use it as a stamp so let's go back to the carving stamp tool and we need to start selecting the bit we want to select as a stamp I'm just going to click off this because I had a bit of a problem selecting um, parts for a stamp that were already selected parts of the design so I'm just going to use the start selecting button now when you take your cursor over it will actually highlight an object that you're touching with an outline in a sort of turquoisey blue now even though it's only highlighting this part of the swirl when I left click on it it actually selects the whole swirl because it was grouped so I'm happy with that now I can actually use the stamp just as I used um, the pa stamp patterns or um, ones I digitized. So I click on use stamp and come over and I've got my little anchor buttons. Now there's a couple more little things I'm going to show you here. First of all I've turned on my snap to grid so you can see there are red lines appearing on the grid lines when my snap to grid is on and I'm hovering over um, a cross where two grid lines cross. Or any if I hover over any of the grid lines they will turn red now I'm going to left click there this is going to help me position that's why I've done that and um, oh before I do that now I don't want to I want to move my heart first so I'm going to backspace and that will release my original anchor point and it escape to get rid of the stamp the first thing I'm going to do which I forgot sorry is position my heart so that it's centered over a grid line so I have removed the auto center for the hoop so that I can manually center which will allow me to center that heart so that I've got a grid line running down the middle it's just going to help me I'm just going to move that across a little bit there we go um, so it's going to help me position my stamps now I can start st using my stamp so if I get to this point here and I swing around now I want to make this actually a little bit longer and if I hold my shift key down I can actually stretch that stamp out to wherever I want it and I've just moved to the center of the heart as you can see so that center line has turned red and I'm going to while my shift key is still down I'm going to left click and that has stamped the stamp in there for me now I want to have a mirror image one on the other side so I'm going to right click which will mirror image my design it also anchors it though so I need to backspace to free it up and find that same position that I used on the other side so looking for those crosshairs to turn red once I'm happy with that left click and swing around and I need to hold my shift key down again till I can actually um, line that up with the other one and line it up in the center so that they're the same size and while my shift keys down I left click and so I've got both those there now I need to escape to get rid of my stamp 
Now you can see that this part of the stamp has faded away a bit. It's got a little bit lost in the detail because the needle points are in the same position as the original needle points on the fill stitch. That's why I like to use the raised um, stamp if possible. The Another way to um, fix this issue is to actually change the angle of your fill stitch. So let's look at that first. We can, we've got our object selected, we can go to our reshape tool and we can actually change the angle round to zero. So it's horizontal, press enter and get out of our reshape tool and there you can see the stamp much more clearly. I'm going to undo that because I want to show you the effect of changing the angle of the stitches in another way in a moment. So let's just undo that. And so we've lost our definition here, but if we go to appearance and we've got our object selected with the nodes around it, uh, we can select raised stamp. Now that has made it much more visible, but we've got some long stitches here that aren't going to stitch out. So this is another point in time where you may ch choose to change the stitch angle. So select your reshape tool, swing your stitch angle round and press enter. Now that we've got it running horizontally, our satin stitch is going to stitch out fine. It depends on the stamp and the shape of the stamp and the angle you've got the stamp at too as to which angle you actually choose to put your fill stitch at. You need to just play around with that a little bit. Okay, so that's much nicer, isn't it? And that was lots of fun. Now I'm going to duplicate that heart because I want to show you how to use a vector image. So let's just duplicate that, copy and paste, and move this one to the side. And I'm going to, while this one's selected, I'm going to clear all stamps. So that will just take all the stamps out of it. Okay. All right. Now I want an image. So I'm going to go to my art canvas. And I'm going to load an image. Ribbon. There it is. Enter. And... I can show you a few more things with this ribbon too. So I'm just going to leave it sitting there for the moment. I do want to get rid of this outline though. So I can go over here to my outline tool, left click on it and press the none and that removes the black outline from the picture. I'm not going to do anything to the picture. I'm going to go straight back to my embroidery canvas and I'm going to move this heart out of the way. <laughs> and scroll across because we're going to work with this heart here. Now I need to go to the Use Object tab. Now it has to be a vector graphic here, this won't work with bitmaps. Now you can see when I try to start selecting, it's going to select the sections of the ribbon. If you have a, um, an image that is in sections like this with different colors and different pieces, then you need to hold down your control key when you're selecting. So hold down your control key, left click on each part and as you click each part it will be added to the stamp. And you can see over here we now have the full stamp selected. So now we can start using the stamp. So I'm going to bring it across, now it's huge. But don't panic about that, I'm just going to left click there, hold down my shift key and shrink that stamp down to the size I want it and left click there. My little ribbon on there, I'm going to escape and I'm going to go to my appearance and I'm going to select raised stamp. And I think that's quite effective there with that satin heart, um, ribbon on that heart and that would look lovely on a card for somebody. But play around, have fun with your carving stamp and all the rest of your software and I'll be back with another video soon. Please subscribe if you like them.